Okay, welcome back. I'm George, and we're so glad to have you. So for all you brewers, distillers, hobbyists, oh gosh, you don't know how much we appreciate it. Please comment below. We answer comments, uh, and we listen to you. Give us a call or send me an email. We're always available. All right, let's get on to this. This is a video about the basic requirements and necessities. I mean, what, what kind of stuff do you need in order to start distilling? Well, we've already gone through the other basic requirements. What do you need to ferment? You know, what does a ferment look like and how to control a violent fermentation? Um, and what do you need to put together a beer, wine, or a mash? Um, so we've, we've covered all that. So go back and look at those videos and you, you'll see what it is that you need. And I think right now we're probably at about 60 bucks. I mean, that's just to get you started with the basic equipment. Now this one is, you're gonna, if you're gonna do some distilling, you're gonna need an apparatus in which to carry out that process. Um, and we call them stills. You can distill water, you can distill spirits, you can, um, you can distill and extract essential oils from things like lavender. Uh, my wife loves that. It makes some lavender oil that lasts forever. Um, you, so you can do so many different things with it. So now these will run you, and it all depends on what you get, of course. Uh, we're going to introduce you to the basic model here. Mile High carries this. This is a three-gallon Mighty Mini, and I've got a video on that anyway on exactly how to run this. But this is just a basic model. And it's the kettle, the the top, the cover, it's a three gallon, uh, the column, and a bung that goes in the top. And what you'll need for that when you get it, and it comes with it, it's either a regular thermometer or a digital thermometer, or you can even invest a couple of bucks and go out and get one of them oven thermometers, you know, it's got the long cable on it with a thermal probe, and stick that through there and stick that in the head. Because remember, the most important temperature is the temperature at the head of your column. So you're measuring the vapor temperature, not the kettle temperature, okay? Now, these also come in uh, an eight gallon model. I've got one of those right here. So let's talk about that briefly. We're looking at uh, close to, I don't know, 350, 390, something like that for this. Um, you're looking at 490, 500 bucks for the eight gallon model. Uh, and, and again, it's it's all personal preference. They make these in 13 gallons, and they, they got a 26 gallon, they got a 53 gallon. Um, it, it, whatever your pleasure is, you can go nuts. Uh, but I'd recommend the eight gallon. I mean, eight gallon just kind of serves its useful purpose for just about anybody, um, unless you know darn well that you're going to keep doing small batches. In a three gallon, you'll make probably at a finished product almost a gallon, and that's after you run it and then flavor it and then cut it. You know, then, um, out of a, an eight gallon, you'll probably make a good two, two gallons. Uh, I, always, I always shoot for seven quarts, but it's pretty easy to get to the eighth quart too if you're doing it right and you got the right equipment this and the right process. Okay, now, but here's what's interesting. Um, and I have people call and say this all the time. They say, well, what do you recommend? I said, well, you know, for believe it or not, for the cost, I'd rather get the eight gallon because I can actually distill three gallons in an eight gallon, but I can't do five gallons in a three gallon. Because normally that's what we put, we put five or six gallons in this. But you couldn't put that in this one, but you could definitely, whatever you had for this one, you could put it in this one. So you don't have to fill these things up. Now, another thing that's interesting about this is that here's something that's universal. These are made out of 304 uh, stainless steel. The most versatile, uh, most readily available, High quality stainless steel on the market, used for all kind of food grade projects and hospital. It, 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 good stuff. Made by two different companies, but there's something that is universal about all of these stills, and that is the cap, the top. Well, this top is made sort of like a cone, and this one is flat. But you'll notice This one has a hole in it that's three inches for a three inch column. The only difference between a three inch and a two inch column is the time it takes to run it. And so that one's got a two inch hole in it. This one's got a three inch. Guess what? They're interchangeable. Yeah, how about that? Uh, so you could have purchased one 
and then later on purchase just the kettle or vice versa, go back and forth, whatever the case may be. Um, there's also a cost savings when you buy this as a pot reflux, a combination pot reflux, because uh, it, it gives you the benefit of both worlds. You can do a pot or a reflux. If you don't want to run the reflux, just run it like a pot still. But if you buy it as just a pot still, you're going to save about 60 bucks, eh, 70 bucks maybe. Now, later on down the road, when you go, hey, I'm going to expand, I'm going to do a reflux. Well, now you got to buy a reflux column, and now you're up into almost 200 bucks. Whereas, you could have got it in the beginning and just not used it until you needed it. So it's better to have and not need than to need and not have. What do you think? All right, so those are interchangeable. Now, last but not least, in order to, I'll, I'll leave this right here. In order to run this, of course, you're going to need uh, cool water going in the bottom and that water coming out the top of your Liebig condenser. Uh, and these condensers can be of any style. They can be coils, it, whatever it is. <laughs> I've got a heating element in both of these because both of these kettles, this kettle comes standard with the adapter so that you can put a, an element in there if you ask them for, oh, excuse me, the coupling that goes on the outside. Uh, this one you just have to add. All you got to do is ask a brew house and it, they'll weld it on there for you. And this one's from Mile High. They're both equivalent products. Um, both require a water pump. This water pump pumps about, I don't know, 600 gallons an hour. Uh, you don't need anything that strong uh, unless you're raising water from the floor up. So in this particular case, you know, this one will raise water because it's got a good pressure about eight feet or more. <laughs> Um, so this one works really good. You just put a bucket of ice water here and run it through, recirculate it. Uh, you could also hook it up to the garden hose and just run a trickle of water through with the garden hose. Just, but just remember now, it, you're going to be running this for several hours. That's a lot of water to waste. So I just like to recycle it through ice, you know, keep it cool because the temperature of this water just has to be cooler than the vaporization temperature that happens inside the kettle. That's easy. Now you can get those small, they got to make these really small pumps, the pond pumps or the waterfall pumps. Um, and when you get one of those, just make sure that you raise the water and pump across instead of trying to pump up because it won't lift the water that high. But all you're trying to do is move the water. So if you lift that water up high enough to be about the level of the, the exit port, you'll pump water in. You're just moving water. Move water out, goes into another bucket. Then you can start switching those buckets, uh, you know, with ice. It, it's a beautiful thing, okay? So, um, uh, that's really all I've got for you. And that's the basic items you're going to need. So, you're talking about an investment of uh, up to about 500 bucks. Uh, but uh, you're set for life after that. It's not like you have to buy anything else. Uh, you're set for life, uh, provided you've got the original, you know, fermenter and all that stuff. Um, now, incidentally, I want to show you this. Uh, this is, you know, today's a February the 28th. Uh, this is the uh, watermelon, cantaloupe, strawberry, apple uh, mash that I made back in May of this past year. And it's still sitting here because guess what? I ain't got to it yet. Uh, I've got so much going on. But... This is just a demonstration. You'll notice there's nothing growing in here. This is a demonstration of that a mash will not turn to vinegar. It can't. Uh, you've got to introduce acetobacter virus in there in order for that alcohol to be eaten and converted to a vinegar. So as long as I keep that sealed and I have, I've got water in my airlock. I've got it sealed. It's been sitting there for, what, nine months now. Um, I'll get to it eventually. It will not be any better and it will not be any worse than it was the day that it finished. There you go. Until next time, happy distilling. <laughs>